What's up everyone? We're Matt and Kara with Ozark Overland Adventures. Hey guys. And we have had the Conqueror now for almost a year. And we've been getting asked quite a bit lately, where's the we Conqueror? Think... Have you sold it? Yeah. Uh, we don't see it in many videos. Did you do a review on it? Yeah. Um, you still like it? Like, yeah, we, we're getting that a lot lately. And so we have actually had it here in Copper Harbor, Michigan for CORE for the last five days, yeah. I think. We've been laying it for the last five days. So today we're going to do a one year review of what we don't like, what we love, and some things that we are thinking about changing. Yeah, definitely. It definitely has its pros and cons, but a whole lot more pros. Oh yeah. And, and the I cons even are say easy. cons. They're things that we want to adjust. Right. Because just as a reminder, we bought this not to travel around in, you know, extensively now, but to live in this full time in mm -hmm. three years. So this this is going to be our home yeah. in three years. So that's we're, what we bought it. We're kind of making the payments to get those down. Exactly. <laughs> a little bit more. And yep. we're also taking it out on some trips like here yeah, at Copper Harbor to see. Figuring it out, which yeah. is what we've been doing. So let's, uh, let's, let's get going. Go on, guys. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo, Artemis Overland Hardware. They have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for Overland Adventure trailers and Moon, makers of the Moonshade Portable Awning. So one of the main things that we love about our Conqueror is the kitchen setup. It's really nice to have everything all included. It comes with all of this stuff, as you've seen in the, in the walk around when we first got it. And there is not a wasted space in here. So there's all of these storage bags on the outside of both sides of the doors. Our favorite setup is having half of it enclosed and half of it open. We like having the openness of this kitchen area and then in the back, what we call the back porch. That's where we go to the bathroom and do things privately. Um, but there's the storage in here for our pantry. It's accessible inside as well as whenever you push the fridge in, you can access it in there. A lot of times whenever we're just going on the road, like at Cabela's on the way here to Michigan, we just pulled off the side. We have access to everything that we need on the inside. We love the fact that it comes with two massive 180 degree awnings. And like I said, we've been up here for the last five days and it has been pouring down rain at some point every single day. So I feel like that this has been a really good test of its wet weather capabilities. And we've been dry. And we have been dry and comfortable inside. We didn't have any issues. And I, I can't speak highly enough of this. So I, I'm very optimistic of this when we're on the road full time and we do encounter some wet weather. And it's not just dry like you're in a rooftop tent dry. It's dry, you can stand up, change, have a living space dry. Yeah. But like Kara said, uh, our preferred method of setup is open on the driver's side, which is where the kitchen is. And then we do use the walls and enclose the back side, which is the back patio, back the backyard. Um, so all of that under there stayed dry. So we had dry grass for goose and it, it worked out very well. When we need to, we can enclose this 360 degrees with walls there's a, a roof kit for the back here so we can fully enclose this and basically turn it into a yurt um, if we're going to be staying somewhere long enough but this is this has been an incredible setup this this is the back and i'll just walk all the way around it that's the door windows here's the front Here's this side. There's another door. Another window. And Hi. in the back again. Let's go inside. It's the back door. I can go this way. There's pantry. And of course our table. All all enclosed. Excuse me, love. Let's go inside and walk through and over here let me see 
it's fully enclosed under there. And then I'll just walk around the house. On the inside, we've done a couple different configurations here. We love the living space down here and the fold out bed there. Normally we do sleep up there, but this time we decided to convert this area into the bed. And honestly, it wasn't that bad. Like it didn't take us that long to flip it in and out. No, it didn't. And this is definitely the most comfortable mm -hmm. bed because it's just really big and there's plenty of leg room. That one, my legs hang off, um, my bad. feet hang off the back. But I do, you know, this trip, we've just been using this as our storage area. As you can see. Which is, I mean, it's it's been handy. It's been real handy to have this as our storage area. But all of this has been, uh, you know, easily accessible from the inside. And for this trip, I mean, we're using maybe half the storage in here. Yeah, this is actually, this was fully empty, but we put our dirty clothes in here. And we don't even really need to be using this, but I just have a case up here. That's our like shower, shampoo, bathroom stuff. Um, but if we needed to, we could just take this out and use that and as an extra space. These are mostly empty. That one's empty. Yep. That's got my dirty clothes. This is where we kind of put our, our, our closet. Our, our, her clothes are over there, my clothes are over there. Shoes and winter stuff are down here. And it's uh, it's been working really well. Yep. I love the amount of headroom I have. Cause I'm six foot one. So I love Can being get... able to stand in this and not have any issues. Uh, that has been fantastic. So a couple things that I personally may change. Um, we don't really use this and it kind of gets in the way um, whenever it's folded in. It's just kind of a hassle. I do like hooking up like my Nintendo to this. You can play the Nintendo here or we also can hook up our cameras and watch stuff and watch how we film some things on here. So that could be kind of handy. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to stay though. Yeah, it's kind of, eh, it's not one of the things that we need. But one of the things over here that we would like to put on the bathroom area is a mirror just just to put some kind of three adhesive tape mirrored up here. Um, maybe one off of Amazon, super cheap. Just so that way whenever we're brushing our teeth, blowing our drying our hair because I was using a really small mirror this you morning were. um and maybe put one just on that bathroom door we don't need one on the other door but so one of the things that I hate probably more than anything in this thing is the electrical system it's uh it's just not good it's a hodgepodge of different brands and it just uh it, it doesn't work very well um the, so what we are going to do is rip all of the electrical out and replace it with a Red Arc Red Vision system. So, and the manager, Red Arc Manager 30 and the Red Vision system. So the Red Vision will control everything. The Manager 30 will keep the batteries charged. This does come with two 100 amp hour batteries, which sounds, you know, 200 amp hour sounds great, but they're AGM batteries, uh, not lithium iron phosphate. So those will be ripped out and replaced for sure with lithium iron phosphate, maybe some bigger sizes. Um, but that's going to be probably a fall winter project when it's to, not to get this out and re replace everything. Because this is the this is the solar charge the, the solar controller here and the inverter. I I can't use any type of electrical AC outlets if we're not plugged in the shore power. So that's got to change to have an inverter that I can use. Yeah, you know, when we're off grid, which is where we'll be 99% of the time. Also, there's the carpet we added in this. Um, before, when we got it, it just had the really thin, paper-like industrial, car industrial out, indoor carpet. outdoor carpet. Yeah, and I knew whenever my feet are in here, they were it was cold. There wasn't much of a barrier, and just for sound, that kind of thing, and just the feel of it. Like I said, it has been real cozy. It's super. The cozy. carpet's super nice. I'm glad we did that. Um, so we just went to Lowe's and we just got some carpet pieces that you could cut. We actually cut some of this around, um, but mostly it fit all in here, um, and we love it. We make sure we take our shoes off and kind of keep it clean. Um, so this is entering the, the back covered area. So a little potty there. Uh, we've kept Goose's stroller back here. And I mean, all of this is completely dry and we've had inches and inches of rain. Uh, love the fact that all of the awning arms have built in LEDs. That's super nice. Uh, but that's that's how we use this back area here is um, just, just for dry space. And in the winter time, put a propane fire pit in here and it will turn this whole thing into a very nice 
warm, toasty area when it's freezing cold outside. I mentioned that this does not have any way to run AC power if you're not plugged into shore power, which, which is very high on my list of chains. So, to uh, compensate for that, I've uh, been using the Blue Eddy EB55 just to, to run our, our nice little camp lights that we put here uh, to run a hair dryer when Kara's washed her hair and you know keep some other things charged out here um, so we, we have had to supplement with a little power station and that's uh that's worked very well the other thing that i do not like that is honestly just kind of worthless uh, we love this kitchen setup and the, the pantry over there uh, but this dometic stove it uh it's horrible this <laughs> It's a piece of poo. Uh, this, these are designed to be inside an RV, not outside a camper like this. So this is a 7,500 BTU burner. This is a 5,000 BTU burner. Add in some, you know, a little bit of wind and stuff out here. This will barely boil water. And so I'm not sure if we're gonna figure out some way to gut this and put something more substantial in here or may just leave this as a, a countertop and just go with like a jet boil, you know, our, my jet boil Genesis stove or care stove or something here. Uh, not sure what we're gonna do with that yet because I can't find anything like a, we'd love to have like a partner stove that fits down in here, but I think I'd have to fab up some brackets and stuff to make that work. So I'm not sure, uh, but I do love the fact that it has uh, quick propane fittings that go from, from here uh, to there. So that's super handy. Uh, the storage up here. I love the fact that it has an air compressor for the uh, for the suspension. So it does have air suspension. And when we get to camp, I can raise and lower one side to level this thing out. That's super awesome. And the water pump is great. Uh, having hot water at camp is great. But uh, it's just, it, it's just, it's the stove. The, the stove is not so great. I am actually not fond of the hot water on this, um, just the way that it regulates. I took a shower at Big Bend National Park and it would go hot and then it would get really cold and then it would go really hot and then it warm, cold. It just wouldn't regulate, it wouldn't stay consistent. If it was stay consistently warm, I would be totally fine with that. It's just not consistent. And I don't know if that's something we just don't know about. Gotta learn. I, I think know. it's something unique. I think it's a Fagotti or Fagotti or something hot water heater. Um, yeah. And I've heard other people say that it, it, it does fluctuate. It's fine when you're washing dishes and doing that sort of thing. But yeah, taking a shower with it does, it I is want questionable. Constant warm water. Yeah. And I don't know what we can do about that. I don't either. One thing we love is that you don't have to deploy this to, to use it. So when we are on the move from one place to another and we just need to pull into some place and sleep for the night, you don't have to fold out the front. You don't have to pop up the roof. You can just make this bottom bed and within five minutes of getting somewhere, you're asleep. Uh, we've done that several times and that's been really handy uh, to not have to actually deploy this to, to use it and to sleep in it. We can just jump in there and go. So that's super handy. So another thing that we are gonna pull out of this thing is the AC and heater unit. We do not even use that. We don't, haven't been in the situation. We have a diesel heater. We have a portable air conditioner, the Zero Breeze. Um, so that's just taking up some space that we could put things in. I think that's it. Uh, just a, a very quick overview of what we love, what we what we don't like, what we're going to change. Yeah. We did do a full walk around video um, last fall when we got it. Somewhere. We'll, down there in the description. Down there. Down there. <laughs> uh, link will be in the description for that. If you want to see the full walk around, they'll take you through all the details mm -hmm. of this thing. So would, knowing what we know now after having this a year, a year would we purchase this again? Absolutely. Absolutely in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, I, I think for what we're going to be doing no in three years living out of this, I think it's going to be perfect for mm -hmm. us. Um, it is, it's fantastic for going someplace and setting up base camp. And every time we go out in it, it just reaffirms that I love it. It does, it, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we would we would buy it again. Um, do what I mentioned, we, we, we did buy this um, <laughs> from Outback RV in Denton, Texas. They have 
uh, all the conquerors they have a there's bunch of other styles. yeah they have there's a this is the 490 they have the 440 and they have some new ones too but if you're in the market for a, an overlanding off-grid trailer mm -hmm. definitely check out uh, outback rv in denton texas because this sales guys there were fantastic the service there has been fantastic you know we've had some you know, we've had some some little issues that are just part of owning a trailer and we don't know how um, to do it yeah like, never... like the air compressor went out yeah i was covered under warranty they sent me a new air compressor yep. um uh you know just little things like that that, that, that is going to happen and they were fantastic yeah. they're taking care of us so uh if you're in the market for one go check out uh, outback rv in texas yeah, and so cool. anyway if you have any questions about the conqueror about our experiences with it put them in the comments we yeah. are happy to answer well we hope you enjoyed this uh, quick little walk around it is now time for us to pack this thing up yeah. and head out of here and start the journey home uh, so if you would give the video a like subscribe to the channel if you're not already check out our patreon if you like what we're doing and want to you know support us and gain access to special content and events and stuff that we do and uh for um Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and Cotty Womple Overland mm -hmm. merchandise. I love Cotty Womple. Shout out to Bill and Debbie with Cotty Womple. Uh, Kara's repping them. Uh, go to okay. shopoverlandapparel.com. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Bye.